Please welcome William Rickert, Chair, Board of Trustees. As Chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees, I have the honor of officially opening today's ceremony and being the first to congratulate the 2019 Master's Graduates of Teachers College. The degrees you have earned are not just rewards for the courses, papers, and exams you have completed. They are also proof that you have collaborated with some of the best minds in your field, that you are ready to confront the biggest challenges, and that you have what it takes to become outstanding leaders and change makers. Many of you will take on the noble profession of teaching, armed with a rigorous combination of theory, practice, and specialized training that only TC can provide. There is no higher or more urgent calling than the shaping of future generations, and we salute all of our teachers here today. But preparing teachers is only one way that Teachers College fulfills its mission of advancing education and improving the lives of individuals, families, and communities. TC graduates are dedicated to increasing human well-being both in and out of schools and classrooms and across the lifespan. As principals and superintendents, as artists and arts administrators, as psychologists and health practitioners, and as leaders of every stripe. For more than 130 years, TC scholars have discovered new ways to understand the complex forces that shape our minds, our bodies, and our relationships with each other and the world around us. Their foresight led to the creation of many fields, such as social studies education, special education, and inclusive education, that many of you will now advance in your own distinct ways. Today, TC offers programs in education, health, psychology and leadership, all sharing a single aim, to help individuals and communities reach their full potential and flourish. Now it is my very great pleasure to introduce the president of Teachers College, Thomas Bailey. Let's do better than that, please. Good morning. It's such a beautiful day in this beautiful space. So welcome, really, to this wonderful occasion as we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. So let's hear it for the Teachers College class of 2019. Hey. All right. That's much better. So certainly, graduates, you're the stars of our show today, but we have a large supporting cast that also uh, deserves our thanks. So first, uh, let's hear it for the faculty who've supported you and pushed you along. From... Also, I want to acknowledge our staff who help run the college and especially who've put together this convocation. I also want to acknowledge our volunteers who, who will help us maintain our buildings and process our paperwork and have taken the day to help make this event uh, the success that it is. So let's thank all the staff and volunteers. And family, perhaps the most important, your family, your spouses, your partners, whose countless acts of generosity, kindness, and infinite patience were indispensable to your success. Thank you. Now, nearly a century ago, the great lawyer Clarence Darrow said that lost causes are the only causes worth fighting for. Now, that might sound a bit quixotic, Darrow, after all, lost his most famous case, defending a high school teacher in the so-called Scopes Monkey Trial. But while the other side won the battle in court, it lost the war. 
The trial proved a watershed moment that led to the widespread acceptance of the teaching of evolution despite continued closed-minded opposition. Perhaps what Dewa really meant was when very important causes hang in the balance, we must fight all the harder for them because the stakes are so high. Or as the editor of the magazine The Nation recently said, there are no lost causes, only causes waiting to be won. Now what are those important causes waiting to be won today? What is the role of Teachers College in that fight? What roles will you play as you prepare for the next stages of your lives? Let's start with the issue that confronts every single person on the planet and for which many others have noted there simply is no plan B. I'm talking about climate change, climate change denial, and the resulting fundamental disruptions of the world's environment, geography, population movements, and social structure that it will cause. In the last decades, the majority of respected experts have concluded that the increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the rise in temperatures, the melting of the polar ice caps, and the climb and sea levels have dramatically accelerated. In short, we have passed certain key tipping points. In the, ne the next decade will be a make or break period for us all. We must literally find a way to stem the tide. All of our programs at Teachers College in education, health, and psychology have a role to play in responding to the potential and reality of climate change. But as educators, caregivers, researchers, policymakers, shouldn't we also think about climate change even more broadly? As a metaphor, creating a healthier climate for achieving progress on a whole range of issues and challenges. Challenges ranging from stereotypes and biases that warp perceptions of reality and infect public discourse, to the persistence of racism, anti-Semitism, sexism, and discrimination which poses an existential threat to our civilization, as lethal as climate change is to our planet. And the growing inequality, frustration, and thwarted goals throughout the world, as well as in our own country. What if, what if we created a climate where facts matter, where diversity of culture, experience, and thought is valued rather than feared? where the freedom to think and speak freely does not become a license to insult, demean, or demonize those with whom we disagree? What if we turned our diversity into fertile ground for developing solutions that are broad enough to work on a mass scale, yet flexible enough to be adapted to different contexts? What will happen if we rallied our better angels and learn to work together for the common purpose and the common good. The history of the civil rights movement and struggle, which ended legal segregation and outlawed racial discrimination in housing, voting, and employment, furnishes us with important answers and examples. Those who took part in the civil rights movement did not solve every problem or get everything right, and neither will we. They made mistakes and often failed to follow through on their promises. So will we. There's still much work to do to accomplish the goals of the civil rights movement, and we will always have more work to do to achieve our goals. But the civil rights movement got many of the big things right, and so could we. We could make major gains and progress towards becoming a better, more productive, more just society. So the question for us today is, how can we make the climate better for everyone? The civil rights movements required building awareness, knowledge, and understanding, confronting racism and structural barriers to progress and equality. And likewise, today we must educate ourselves about the true nature and scope of the problems we face instead of turning away in fear or denying that problems exist at all. 
We must educate ourselves about solu what solutions really work, as demonstrated by rigorous testing in the lab in the real world, rather than privileging ideas we merely want to work or think should work. And as educators, we must work to make our climate inhospitable to racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of discrimination. At the most basic level, we must educate ourselves about one another. Ultimately, as I've said, we need each other's perspectives and ideas. But to create such an exchange, we must first stop fearing and distrusting one another, and then try to understand what the world looks and feels like from each other's vantage points. What do the human beings across from me lack or fear or aspire to? What matters most to them? Now, I'm raising these questions at each of our convocation ceremonies this week. But as the education and health professionals who will directly improve human well-being, and as experts and thought leaders who will be shaping evidence-based policies that work, all of you here today will have powerful opportunities to put your TC education to work to build a better world. To illustrate my point, let me briefly tell you about one of our soon-to-be fellow alumni, of your soon-to-be fellow alumni, Dr. Michael Carrera. Now, listen to this sentence. A member of our health and behavioral studies faculty who earned his TC doctorate nearly 50 years ago today, 50 years ago. In 1984, when Dr. Carrera started an after-school program as a children's aid, at the Children's Aid Society in Harlem, three in four girls in that community were becoming pregnant in their teens. With no literature yet on prevention, Dr. Carrera simply talked to the kids about sex, a popular topic. But after a few months, he realized that their behaviors were not changing. So he asked them what else was on their minds, and the answer had nothing to do with sex. Instead, they, the responses touched on abuse, neglect, racism, fears about school and college, and all of the other daunting realities of their young lives. Those responses proved to be a turning point in Dr. Carrera's work. He launched a national program within Children's Aid Society that has received more than $150 million in funding and been implemented in 21 states. The impact has been significant. A three-year randomized control trial found that girls participating in the program were 40% less likely to have ever been pregnant, 50% less likely to have ever given birth, Boys who participated in the program became more knowledgeable about sex and were significantly more likely to seek sexual and general medical care for themselves. Both sexes were 30% more likely to have graduated from high school and obtained a GED, and 37% were more likely to be enrolled in college. Nationwide, thanks in great part to Dr. Carrera's work, overall teenage pregnancies have dropped 50%. And today, a young man Dr. Carrera worked with long ago in central Harlem directs the same Children's Aid Society Center where he recently supervised Michael Carrera's granddaughter as an intern. Please join me in a round of applause for a real TC hero, Dr. Michael Carrera. <clears throat> But it's not just our alumni who, have, who are doing great things. Many of you who are graduating here today have your own stories. When Michelle Burris arrived in Rwanda to teach English, she was admonished by Rwandans who thought an African-American Peace Corps volunteer should be fluent in their language. How did Michelle respond to this rebuke? She created a training manual to help black volunteers navigate the cultural and linguistic divide in nations populated by people of color. The Peace Corps still uses that. Michelle has what educators call grit. She also understands the connection between teaching and broader climate around it. Michelle has deepened that connection as a politics and education master's student at Teachers College, as a Zankel Fellow, 
She has taught at Truman High School in the Bronx and Bronx International High School. She worked with professors Michelle Knight Manuel and Sandra Schmidt on a project called the Sankofa Club, which has created spaces at both schools for community building, discussion, and potential advocacy. Michelle has also worked closely with TC's Government Affairs Office, traveling to Albany, Washington, DC, to try to protect graduate student aid. What's next for Michelle? Initially, she was planning to work in the education policy on Capitol Hill or in the nonprofit sector. But then a chance meeting earlier with Rep Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez inspired Michelle to put the pursuit and another dream of hers on a faster track, representing her home district in Maryland in Congress. Michelle, I'm sure it won't be long before we see your name on the ballot and your face on CNN. Congratulations. <laughs> This is the power of research and practice in the realm of mental and physical health. This is the power of informed policymakers. This is the power and trust that Teachers College now places in your hands. Some of you will use that power to change the way entire communities understand and approach health issues. Some will work to bring the fruits of neuroscience to bear in improving our teaching strategies, our schools, and our social policies. Still others will work as policy advisors to, to city, state, and national governments, or as psychologists who change societal attitudes around racial and cultural identity. But all of you, health educators, psychologists, policymakers, neuroscientists, all of you will play a vital and decisive role in educating young and future generations to flourish in mind, in body, and in civic spirit. You will teach them to become well-informed citizens who can treat the environment with care and one another with respect. You will teach them to distinguish truth from lies and real facts from alternative facts. You will encourage them to think for themselves and you will inspire them to embrace justice. And by teaching them well, you will go a long way towards removing carbon from the air, hate from our discourse, and racism and anti-Semitism from our society. Sadly, you will encounter people, let's call them education deniers, who will not appreciate your gifts or value your work. They may mock you as social justice warriors, but remember, reversing climate change literally and figuratively is not a lost cause. Even convincing climate and education desires to change their thinking is not a lost cause. These are all causes waiting to be won. And we look to you, members of the Teachers College class of 2019, to lead the way to those victories. Thank you and congratulations. So we now reach the moment in this ceremony where we honor an extraordinary individual whose life's work has advanced the cause of education while upholding TC's core mission to foster excellence and equity in the fields we serve. Among those honors at past ceremonies were Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Coretta Scott King, Senator George Mitchell, Pete Seeger, Eric Holder, Thomas Freedom Friedman, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Gail Collins, Spike Lee, Linda Darling-Hammond, Jelani Cobb, Temple Grandin, and the Reverend Dr. Martin Butts. This year, we honor four preeminent scholars and practitioners, Michelle Fine, Rosie Phillips Davis, Sarita Brown, and Barbara Morgan. I am pleased to welcome TC Professor Marla Broussard joined by Pro Provost Thomas James to introduce Rosie Phillips Davis. Thank you.
Good morning and congratulations, graduates. It is my pleasure to invite our medalist, Rosie Phillips Davis, to join us at the podium. Rosie Phillips Davis, in campaigning to become the American Psychological Association's president, you posted a brief statement in which, rather than touting your many academic publications and honors, you noted the following three facts. Your parents were sharecroppers. Your father later joined the 1968 Memphis sanitation strike. And your mother cleaned houses for white women at $25 a week. Citing those facts, underscore your call to vocational psychologists to address a world in which technology and globalism have eliminated entire categories of jobs while further disenfranchising the poor and the undereducated. This also speaks volumes about your vision of vocational counseling as a field that recognizes the primacy of race, culture, gender, and socioeconomic status in shaping people's lives. You have devoted your career to fulfilling that vision. In 1999, you led the creation of the American Psychological Association's Nat National Multicultural Conference and Summit, where recommendations were endorsed for multicultural guidelines for research, teaching, and practice. In 2006, you called for counseling psychology to recognize that in modern societies, no separation exists between people's personal and vocational issues. Career choices begin with genetics, gender, and family, you wrote, but it is framed by sexism, racism, and exclusion. And in 2011, you asked vocational psychologists to help right-size the workforce with special attention to veterans and victims of disasters. Building on the feminist movement's concept of paid and non-paid labor, you urged your field to help win remuneration for people who do socially valuable work like caring for the elderly. Today, your APA initiative on deep poverty is challenging and overturning long-held perceptions of the very poor by promoting research that illuminates structural links between poverty and behavioral, mental, and physical health challenges. Your initiative has raised awareness in Congress, corporations, and communities, and it charges psychologists with reshaping narratives around poverty and policies that contribute to it. Rosie Phillips Davis, for shaping your own inspiring narrative, for spotlighting poverty as a force that frames human psychology, and for leading psychology itself to become more compassionate, more inclusive, more socially conscious. We proudly present you with the Teachers College Medal of Distinguished Service. was overwhelming. <laughs> I want to thank the board, the president, 
provost, all of the selection committee members who gave me this great honor. And I want to say hello. I, I had to speak in Atlanta day before yesterday, and I met a young woman named Morgan. Morgan, are you here? Wave if you are. There she is. <laughs> she said she was on her way to Teachers College to her graduation. I said, I'm going there to speak. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be here, as is Morgan. Well, I have three points to make in a very short time. Living a life of purpose, saving money because we need some more rich people, <laughs> and being kind. I asked one of my graduate students what she, what she would want to hear from a speaker at her graduation. She told me, tell them to seek a job that is lucrative and serves a purpose. I suspect that she be began with lucrative because as a graduate student, she is struggling financially. Yet her words are more powerful than she probably even appreciates. There are so many big, real-world problems that are begging for your attention. As president of the American Psychological Association, I've gotten to select one or more initiatives that the association can focus on, at least for the duration of my time as president, even though I snuck in a way to make it last longer. My most important initiative is the focus on deep poverty. And you can find a TED talk by me on that very subject. In that talk, I describe how we tend to blame poor people for their condition. We believe that they just don't work enough. On the other hand, we tend to believe that people who have a lot earned it. Neither of these statements is exactly true. I chose to focus on poverty because when I heard an NPR radio broadcast in 2016 that focused on poverty mythbusters, I was surprised to learn that if you are in the economic bottom quintile in the United States, that your chances for reaching the top quintile is at most 12.9% in San Jose, California. Now, I was in my closet doing exercises while I heard this report. And then I heard them say, and I live in Memphis, Tennessee, that if you're in Memphis, Tennessee, your chances are 3%. 3%. And that's when I realized I'm a flat out miracle. I was born into the, a family where the main breadwinner was a garbage man. I'm a garbage man's daughter. In that TED talk, I describe a little girl who lived in a shotgun house. For some of you in the North, that's like railway cars where you can pick up a shotgun and stand at the front door and shoot right through and the bullet goes right out the back door. In the TED Talk, I described a little girl who lived in a shotgun house with nine brothers and sisters. That family lived in these little rooms that were like 10 by 10, and they had old-fashioned wooden floors that if you walked on them in your bare foot, you'd get a splinter in your foot. You're nodding your head. You know about it. <laughs> when that little girl walked to school, she was often subjected to taunts, like, ooh-wee, you so black and ugly because she was dark-skinned and had short, nappy hair. She obviously had on second-hand clothes or dollar store clothes. That little girl slept in a bed with four of her sisters, and in the other bed right next to them were her four brothers. So clearly these children were poor. 
Rose's dad was part of the sanitation strike when Dr. Martin Luther King came to Memphis and was killed trying to help poor people. In those days, poverty was defined as a family of four, two adults, two children, living on $6,000 a year. In Rosie's family, it was two adults, two children, nine children and two adults living on $2,500 a year. So the family lived way below the poverty line. But people blame them for being poor. They blame the father for not having enough education, not working enough hours, and the mother for staying with the father and having all those children. But there are people who didn't blame. They chose a life of purpose and service. They were Rosie's teachers. They encouraged her to read, to dream. And in fact, Rosie even dreamed about coming to New York and looking up at skyscrapers and coming around a building and bumping into a man and falling in love. Oh well. <laughs> they encouraged her, though, to read, and they even got her a prom date. What makes some, some people choose to be purposeful and kind? I'm not sure. But I am sure that the nearly 40 million poor people in this country hope that you live a life of purpose. I'm betting that the 18 and a half million people who live in deep poverty are hoping that you will remember them. I told you what the poverty rate was in 1968. Well, today is two adults and two children living on $25,000 a year and deep poverty that 18 and a half million people who live in deep poverty. That's two adults and two children on $12,500 a year. Around the world, there are a billion people who live with their families on less than $2 a day. They need you. <clears throat> Former House Representative Ron Dellum said, it's criminal that we turn a blind eye to poverty. The solutions are multidimensional. You have to deal with health care, housing, jobs, education, crime, and social justice. But I'm betting on and counting on that you will not turn a blind eye that you won't blame. I hope that you're living a life of purpose in a way that makes a difference to those millions and millions of people. Oh, I don't mean with all those degrees in bio, behavioral sciences, counseling and clinical psychology, education policy and social analysis and health and behavioral studies that you should all run out and work for the Robin Hood Foundation which is the largest poverty-fighting organization in New York. But I am hoping you will ask yourself if what you're doing is making a difference to the poor people in the world. Will my policy analysis help increase access, access to health care for millions of people affected by tropical diseases and even measles? I hope that you're asking, will my work in psychological research eventually help to bring down the number of six million seniors, old people like me, who go to bed hungry every night? Or the one in five children who are food insecure? I hope that no matter how lucrative your job is or how little it pays, that no matter what your next step is, working, going for another degree, or going home to live with your parents, which parents I know you hope that's not the case, 
I hope that you won't sit on the sidelines. Shirley Chisholm said, you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines. So make sure you do something of purpose. And then my practical advice to you is this. Start saving today. I know you think you can't, but you can. Start saving today. I don't know if they covered this in your classes, did they? No, okay. <laughs> I know that if you have a good job with benefits, you will have a retirement savings, but I'm not talking about your retirement savings. I'm talking about that extra money that you pay yourself and don't touch for a good long while. You can do it. Don't drink a Starbucks. You can do it. That is the money that will eventually let you fly first class if you want to, give you down payments for your homes, allow you not to have credit card debt. I didn't learn about saving like that until I was 50 years old. I want you to learn a lot earlier than I did because the world does really need a lot of you to be rich. We need a few more Grace Dodges who use their money for good. I want you to be able to influence policymakers. I want you to do it in a big way so you can help eliminate homelessness and so that not one more child goes hungry. <laughs> so I hope some of you will get those lucrative jo jobs that my graduate student mentioned. And here's my closing thing I want for you. My closing wish is that you will be kind. And kind is not feeling good. Kindness is proactive caring. You do something. It means that you don't stand on the sidelines, but that you are present and caring and doing. The Dalai Lama said, be kind whenever possible, and it is always possible. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome student speaker DeMonte D. Morgan. Master's Candidate, Department of Education Policy and Social Analysis. Oh, I love y'all. President Bailey, Provost James, trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, and fellow graduates, thank you for this incredibly humbling opportunity to address my class the Teachers College Class of 2019. And keep that applause going for your family and friends here today and in their absence, because you all know we got limited tickets, uh, who put in the hard work early on to make this day possible. Your love, sacrifice, and friendship have not gone unnoticed. Thank you. I find myself calling my mom a lot these days. Uh, which is how I know that she is really ready for grandchildren. And she often starts that conversation off by reminding me how I was when I was a child. You're just so restless, she says, uh, only slightly condemningly. And that's right before she reminds me how much of a crybaby I was. You just wouldn't sit still, she said. Now, you gotta understand that calling a child restless in the black child rearing tradition, it's pretty much hyperbole such that whenever you <laughs> readjust, twitch, or otherwise fidget, black parents are keen to brand you with the phrase. Be still, they say. Well, with all due respect to my mama and mamas across the diaspora today, I want to urge you not to be still, to be just a little bit more restless. Now, I'm not talking about the restlessness that comes from not having finished an assignment that's past due or the feelings of transience that sometimes result from not knowing what your next career move is going to be. I'm not talking about the restlessness that many of us sometimes feel from being tight on finances or worrying if we'll find the right romantic partner. No, I'm talking about the restlessness that makes it difficult 
to maintain or accept the status quo, the kind of restlessness that mandates that we fight the battles of tomorrow today. Indeed, the history of our storied alma mater has been scripted by such restlessness. We're all familiar with the, st with the story of the college's founding. As the second industrial revolution raged on in the 1880s, and immigrants from across the Atlantic flooded our shores in search of opportunity, Teachers College was founded with a mission to reimagine teacher education for the social good of society centering the experiences of learners, mostly poor and immigrant women, to create a new kind of pedagogy. In the 1940s and 50s, with the arms of Jim Crow still wrapped tightly around the South, it was Teachers College that took up the mantle of educating black school leaders for counseling and stewardship in their segregated Southern schools. And even as recently as the last two years, we Teachers College students have marched with Black Lives Matter and for a sensible response to the climate crisis. We've lobbied legislators and worked with school leaders and have taught and inspired students across the five boroughs. In these ways and many others, we've already begun to add our imprint on the story of restlessness that is this institution. But friends, if I'm being honest, I haven't always seen the charge I'm giving you today in this light. When I came to Teachers College, I was ready to be steel. I saw my getting in here as the culmination of all that I'd worked for. Having finally attained my Ivy League credential, my Ivy League credential, I was more than prepared to put the adversities of my childhood behind me and settle into a life of ease and comfort that comes with having a degree that says Columbia University. And I'm sure many of you felt the same way. But something about this place, about the mission we've embraced here over the last two years, convinced us to turn away from that path and believe that there's a higher, more purposeful way to go. You see, it wasn't that this place changed who we were. Instead, I think it showed us who we could be. So today, we join with the graduates and scholars who came before us to this august institution to think big and learn to translate that big thinking into action. Indeed, communities all across this country and across the world have benefited from their big thinking. And now those communities are calling out for us, wondering if we will be restless enough in the face of the injustices we've been given to act, asking what will we do with the education we received here? What will we do with what we know? We know that the best way to end generational poverty is by making accessible to every student a great education. Yet we also know that that opportunity is still inaccessible to too many people, depending on how much money you have, how you look, or where you live. We know that addressing disparities in health and in mental health in students early on reduces the proliferation of those disparities when those students become adults. We know that there's a pipeline that systematically moves young black and brown boys from the school system to the criminal justice system with too much ease. But we know too that there are solutions to these problems that plague us because we've talked about them, theorized about them, in our classrooms, in our study groups, and yes, even in our happy hours. And now it's time to act. And because I'm not one to play coy, I'm not gonna tell you that it's gonna be easy. These are big, even daunting challenges, but they are challenges that demand our big thinking now. Now, because there's a poor black girl walking the streets of the Mississippi Delta, wondering if she'll be able to get an education that allows her to achieve her dream of becoming a teacher. Now, because there are children and families in cages at the border of this country whose only crime was being born where latitude and longitude meet at their own coordinates. Now, because the systems and institutions we grew up believing in and depending on can no longer offer us solace and so have to be significantly rethought if they're going to work for all of us. These problems and the students and families affected by them are the reason we cannot be comfortable with the status quo. These students deserve our restlessness now. And while we will always find reasons to wait or think that we can't do something, and while we might again be told to be steel, I hope that we will be uneasy in the knowledge that countless others are praying that we won't. So uneasy that we ask ourselves, who but us should act? Thank you and good luck.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jacqueline Briggs, Master of Arts candidate in the Department of Health and Behavioral Sciences. Jackie is accompanied by John Tarbot on piano. to drive north or south, maybe take a flight east or west, and follow many winding paths till I arrive someplace on a dress. No history, no nickname, no idiotic label. change looks and styles as I step inside brighter clothes and start revealing all myself the better self I fear rarely shows no boundaries no judgments no definitions except able And now to recognize each of the master's degree candidates are Tom Rock, Vice Provost of Student Affairs, and Christine Room, Associate Provost. Good morning. 
At this time, it gives us great pleasure to read the names of those candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Philosophy, and Master of Science degrees at Teachers College, Columbia University. All degrees will be conferred at the Columbia University ceremony tomorrow. Thank you very much. And now, the candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Philosophy, and Master of Science degrees. We'll begin with the Department of Biobehavioral Sciences. Shana Brady. Sarah Rock. Samantha Reneras. Haley Moser. Alexandra Nicolaitis. Aubrey Bright. Shahi Terzi. Talita Campos. Brooke Rothman. Nancy Rello. Tori Levy. Casey Holgan. Isabel Little. Connor Gorney. Alana Harrison. Eric Gutierrez. Katie Schmoos. Snigda Paul. Carla Gottlich. Megan Kunsing. Jamie Glick. Rena Lynn. Rachel Briller. Jacqueline Perez. Olivia Walensik. Reed Godet. Talia Greenberg. Paige Fuentes. Annie Kim. Jernice Hobbs. Kezia St. Louis. Urania Leandrakis. Matthew Innes. Camilla Haspun. Amanda Kirschenbaum. Ziwei Zhang. Julia Morse. Siwan Zhang. Margaret Liko. Sarah Jimena Rojas. Annalisa Sussman. Juliana Andrade. Holly Di Clemente. Rehan Raymond. Hannah Penner. Anna Roller. Annie Nesbitt. Melanie Rodriguez. Christina Rincon. Eliana Satterley. Marianne Crasco. Shiona Golden. Erin Kelly. Aurora Phillips. Bryn Rothschild Shea. Mahak Nurani. Mary Longest. Hadassah Rivera. Connie Shu. Savannah Rivera. Mariello Romero. Elena Fulco. Brianne Healy. Sarah Zong. Elizabeth Itten. Elizabeth Berger. Mercedes Zettelmoyer. Juan Diego Cabrera. Shelly Tong. Shannon O'Brien. Samantha Chu. Hannah Westover. Allison Fu. Megan Nardo. Emily Ryu. Janelle Brito. Jane Choi. Jacqueline Folletti. Priscilla Chu. Zelko Medich. Minmin Lin. Kelsey Lewis. Hillary Wright. Kelly Pompey. 
Ellen Carini. Daria Musavi. Sarah Trapp. Skylar Tasui. Right here. Sherry He. Diana Wang. Maya Kasugi. Alexa Reifinger. Neve Sheehan. Hela Paulino. Neve Sheehan. Islam Ahmed. And Kay Insor. Islam Ahmed. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Biobehavioral Sciences please stand and recognize our graduates. Congratulations. We now would like to invite the candidates in the Department of Counseling and Clinical Psychology. Anne Catherine Toronto. Mila Kirsty Kosa. Go Natalia Jusinska. Galan Ng. Kendra Terry. Yan Rao Shu. Elizabeth Aviv. Yue Yue Sui Kuo. Zalfa Rizik. Manor Subzwari. Hannah Lindenmeyer. Alisa Hirota. Jeffrey Weinstein. Rosanna Haydenrich. Elise Blake. Robert Lewis Charles. Kimberly Tom. Shannon Gray. Carrie Ann Bell. Russell Rogers. Carrie Ann Bell. Danielle Duval. Ren Fong. Danielle Duval. Candace Noble. Cynthia Buford. Candace Noble. Aisha Johnson. Niara Karanard. Regina Francis. Parentorn Tungtawi. Regina Francis. Tanya Suarez. Frail St. Ange. Right here, right here. Taylor Walls. <laughs> Melissa Renga. Danielle Richardson. Christina Argros. Michael Pelican. Diane Chrissy Cho. Benjamin Whitehead. Siwin Louder. Julia Owens. Tyler Pia. Tara Agneshwar. Naira Madden. Janelle Como. Sarah Giluli. Sarah Fernandez. David Alejandro Lopez Molina. Nandita Sharma. Right here. Josephine Juana Marga. Nandita Sharma. Alexander Moller. Josu Arslan Bogan. Hansi Karam Chidani. Xin Yao Zhang. Xin Tian Zhou. Go ahead. Michaela Brown. Xiao Xian Zhou. Yadi Shen. Diogo Alantas Clark. Yadi Chen. Meung Yo. Right here. Lujane Fakira. Meung Yu. Sarah Slayman Tilawi. Gabriel Heller. Miral Malik. Emily Wood. Miral Malik. <laughs> Randy Horowitz. Natasha Irani. 
Joanne Sulis. Reina Badavin. Chelsea Puzangaro. Manali Diolakar. Caitlin Falegi. Roxana Flores. Noemi Klocek. Shauna Samuel. Cynthia Perez. Amanda Gagnon. Cynthia Perez. Jennifer Shoy. Michelle Zikelam. Go ahead. Yuki Hasagawa. Elise Miller. Yuki Hasagawa. Angel Mui. Carrie Ann Sejour. Angel Mui. Rantia. Amy Ewan. Kuma Maseke. Ran Tian. Amy Yuan. Candice Cunningham. Amy Yuan. Judy Saud. Sabahat Surfaraz. Courtney McVicker. Ashley Sepon. Victoria Sondland. Molly Coyne. Julie Bainenson. Janeth Ruvakaba. Emily Steven. Sana Wasig. Lily Downing. Taylor Zambrano. Emma Javits. Brianna Tartaglione. Christine Weinberg. Kaya Mendelssohn. Taima Gondor. Yan G. Lee. Charlene Bernasco. Shell She. Shondell Nurse. Myra Batalvi. Woo! Justin Wang. <laughs> Asya Latifoglu. Justin Wang. Woo! <laughs> Zuyu Khan. Andrew Joseph. Woo! Ali Jaffa. Sheryar Hussein. Ali Jaffa. Chelsea Rafini. Peter Schmidt. Corinne Neese. Brooke Dugan. Corinne Neese. Stephanie Lundquist. Jia Zhao. Irene Tung. Ria Kishnani. Carolina Alvarez. Amber Petroziello. Rosalind Silva. Emily Chasman. Fernando Gonterman. Joni Stone. Angie Chabon. Christy Strongman. Sabina Klein. Caitlin Frawley. Daphne Sayanar. Varithra Vishwanath. Daphne Sayanar. Amy Potter. Luchana Today. Morgan Cooper. Sacha Whedon. Emily Naisi. Charmin Hussein. Crystal Nunez. Alice Carrion. Lisa Melcher. Lauren Mishkin. Nancy Alfaro. Pooja Carr. Henry Espinal. Roshi Chen. Tao Lin. Kate Weisenseal. Ian Chung. Samantha Corso. Anna Raymer. Aliana Wiviet. Taylor Hendrickson. Muna Kasisia. Taylor Hendrickson. 
Emma Wookie. Cassandra Estorque. Saima Manzar. Seiji Bang. Amna Khan. Audrey Mummy. Amna Khan. Zara Kamal Alam. Yoel Juan Paredes Rodriguez. Sarah Reed. Miranda Levy. Right here. Teresa Horkova. Gabriela Rodriguez. Right here. Tiana Thomas Soto. Ford. Tiana Soto. <laughs> Rulian Shu. Stephanie Simpson. Jiexuan <laughs> Lee. Sophia Adler. <laughs> Andrea Rota. Kaylin Crame. Ashley Silver. Medge Jaspin. Mindy Tayo. Ning Tendo. Mindy Tayo. Madeline Ray. Sophia McGee. Sophia McGee. Go ahead. Courtney Cook. Madeline Lynch. Sarah Bested. Steve Murray. Sonia Powell. Erica Shane. Joelle Adifong. Jumana Lofty. Joelle Adifong. Danielle Lacey. Devante Allen. Angelica Smith. Lenina Mortimer. Just one. Lenina Mortimer. Sadie Huang. Jennifer Ye. Chelsea Alvarado. Miles Tufts. Chelsea, Chelsea Alvarado. Jennifer Martinez Oneyeyan. Alana Saab. Oh. Alana Saab. Elise Garrison. Michael Kirsch. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Counseling and Clinical Psychology please stand and recognize our graduates? Congratulations. We now invite the candidates in the Department of Educational Policy and Social Analysis. Michelle oh, Burris. Omar Rodriguez Esparza. Torin Ballard. Moretta Hodges. Moretta Hodges. John Flora. Right here. Greg Blunt. Lucy Green. Christine Harding. Jared Sheck. Amber Moye. Amber Moye. Kendi Rainwater. Janae Harris. Christian Yoseline Mora. Natasia Flood. Leslie Shalito. Sierra West Williams. Catherine Shen. Morgan Markman. Alyssa Jakes. Isabel Linica. Alyssa Jakes. Right here, Elizabeth Huffaker. Sarah Darby. Yeah. Right. Anna Moyer. Mary Gracia Aquino Perez. Shani Nakid Schuster. Nayang Park. Anna Kushner. Sarah Herr. Sarah Mahalik. Yi Wen Wang. Victoria Thomas. Su Fei Zhou. Maggie Huge. 
Liu Chai. Lucette Escobar. Zihan Zhu. Hayden Murray. Ijun Zhu. Daniel Thornton. Ramon Cananza Benuelos Jr. Simone Kenken. Jordan Panecki. Right here. Valentina Aragona. Zoe Turek. Daniel Ye. Amanda Maisonave. Amanda Mary Mary Xing Yi Liu. Mary Inge. Shiru Fang. Latasha Mosley. Xiaohui Yu. Kelly Carde. Xi Yao Wang. Damante Morgan. Ziping Wei. Yuan Lin. Seiya Sato. Michelle Mata. Logan Bays. Hui Wen Zhang. Rebecca Garino. Jia Yang Su. Jessica Gold. Chun Ma. Eliza Eckstein. Christy Noel Crace. Andrea Cornejo. Christine Spaulding. Go ahead. Tall Seagull. John Ying Zhu. Tall Seagull. Molly Hyde. Joshua Wurzman. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Educational Policy and Social Analysis please stand and recognize our graduates. Congratulations. We now recognize the candidates in the Department of Health and Behavioral Studies. Junea Joyner. Geraldine Harith. Sivan Levy. Ying Da Guo. Veronica Vasquez. Sharpay Shao. Susan Demeglio. Ranjana Hari. Jacqueline Briggs. Julia Maser. Chang Yu Li. Amanda Clayton. Bianca Mara. Right here. Stephanie Luck Oprea. Bianca Morrow. Jade Kwong. Christy Vasaliadis. Jiayu Wong. Alexis Finley. Right here. Vivian Shang. Erica Bailey. Chen Yuan Wang. Carrie Camrudin. Yashwin Sun. Sarah Chen. Serena Bajwa. Puyang Zhang. Serena Bajwa. Brooke Marshall. Danielle Colabatisto. Jasmine Hormati. Christy Riley. Jennifer Varola. Kate Hessler. Suzanne Finkel. Jacqueline Amelia Gallardo. Emily Turretson. Candace Golden. Christine Clement. Jillian Griminger. Leslie Heineman. Olivia Minacucci. Alexa McKeon. Lauren Duffy. Right here. Kate Hecker. Siobhan Walsh. Rachel Singer. Danielle Berdiger. 
Katherine Gaspar. Faith Aronowitz. Megan Roop. Pamela Gorski. Carmine Ingenito. Kayla Martinez. Carmine Ingenito. Kelly Baker. Joy Ray. Kelly Baker. Brittany Parker. Chantal Dennis. Brittany Parker. Jessica Griner. Orly Siegel. Jessica Griner. Yes. Euro Ma. Michelle Joe. Alexandra Bacati. Alyssa Montesi. Haley Flyer. Jamila Dermish. Alexandra Fine. Caitlin Sokol. Sarah Muscat Class. Allison Modica. Yi Wei. Amy Pompey. Brendan Nyland. Margaret Turner. Emma March. Stephanie Caballero. Emma March. Charlotte Chan. Julia Bibco. Leanne Fakir. Anna Betzel. Alana Einstein Sim. Eva Boughton. Elena Kaufman. Esther Bakayev. Jessica Rabaza. Gabriella Pedrero. Melina Stone. Abby Lewis. Sasha Parchment. Victoria Hanzik. Barvina Toledo. Kaylee Tierney. Jamie Yu. Emma Kaywin. Jamie Yu. Allison Kozak. Carly Hyman. Sarah Williams. Daria Katarovska. Fidelis Flores. Sarah Pepkin. Lalith Latchman. Yimin Chu. James Leung. Ji Young Kim. One more. Wei Zi. Wei Zi. Will the students and the faculty from the Department of Health and Behavioral Studies please stand and recognize our graduates? Will all of our students and all of our faculty please stand and let's congratulate our graduates. And now, for the presentation of the candidates, please welcome Provost Thomas James. Please be seated. President Bailey, Mr. Rickert, trustees, faculty, and guests. It is my pleasure as Provost of the College to present to you the Master's Candidates from Teachers College. Please hold your applause until I go through each degree. Would Masters of Arts please stand, be recognized, and remain standing? Masters of Arts candidates. Would Masters hold your applause? Would Masters of Science candidates please stand, be recognized, and remain standing? Would Masters of Philosophy candidates please stand be recognized and remain standing. And would Master of Education candidates please stand, be recognized, and remain standing. President Bailey, I ask you to recommend these students for the granting of their master's degree tomorrow morning 
at the Columbia University commencement exercises for the class of 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marion Boltby, the president of the Teachers College Alumni Association. Please be seated. Alumni. Let me say that again. Alumni. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you formally into the Teachers College Alumni Association. As you stand here before this esteemed group and alongside your peers, we look on with great pride. Today, you join our Alumni Association, a network of over 90,000 professionals comprised of graduates from a myriad of academic backgrounds and all walks of life who have created an incredible legacy. You will now become a part of that legacy. Your fellow Teachers College alumni have made a global impact, shaping many fields of inquiry and practice. They have done so through the leadership, tenacity, experience, and wisdom. They have also done so because of the people like the ones around you today who form your support systems and network of peer mentors. Many would also argue that they have done so because of their teacher's college preparation. We know that you too will follow in these footsteps and make your own mark. Just as you needed support during your time at TC, we know you will need similar resources as you embark on your careers. And we encourage you to look to Teachers, Co Teachers College for that support. I'm here today to tell you how valuable your participation in our Alumni Association can be. We are your colleagues and collaborators, supporters and challengers, mentors and mentees, and most importantly, we are your peers. What keeps us all together is our alma mater, Teachers College. While everyone has had a different journey, I'm certain that no one's path leading to this time and place was free of challenges. I'm also certain that along the way you found inspiration, insight, and I hope joy. And many of you have, have developed friendships that will become lifelong. I encourage you to stay connected to your classmates as you move forward in your careers and to tap into the deep pool of expertise and knowledge offered by the broader TC community. We hope to see you at future alumni events as well as featured in future newsletters. Know that you will always have a home in TC's vibrant community. On behalf of your fellow alumni, we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back William Rickert, Chair of the Teachers College Board of Trustees. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Teachers College, I want to congratulate each and every one of you on your extraordinary achievement. We thank your family and friends for joining with the faculty and staff of Teachers College to recognize you, our master's graduates of the class of 2019. We know that your contributions to improving the lives of your fellow human beings will become part of the TC legacy and make us all proud. We ask you all to join us for light refreshments in the Russell Courtyard.
back at Teachers College. Friends and family, we ask that you remain in your seats until all of our graduates have departed. Thank you and congratulations.